Hi, this is a lesson on how to make chocolate from scratch from using raw cocoa beans. There are some other good videos on the internet that show you how to do this. My method is a little tiny bit different and um, so I think it's worth sharing how I do it, how I learned how to do it. This is a method that I learned in Nicaragua and it's using very simple equipment, very easy ingredients. The only hard ingredient to get are these raw cocoa beans. These are fermented dried cocoa beans but they're not roasted so we're going to roast, grind, add sugar, make the whole thing but the ingredients are cocoa beans, sugar, the equipment is a heavy pan for toasting and a food grinder. This food grinder, I bought this in Nicaragua for about twenty dollars. I found them on the internet available anywhere, uh, Amazon, you name it, anywhere from $30 to about $50 for one of these things. Not just great for making chocolate, great for grinding coffee, for making tortillas, lots of other stuff. I will post a video later about making tortillas, but first of all, let's get to making chocolate. I've taken these beans and I've cleaned them off. I've taken all the um, bad looking ones, ones that have maybe been eaten by bugs, ones that are really small and shriveled up, thrown those all out, cleaned it all out nice and good. And what we're going to do is we're going to toast these. Now, some people toast these in the oven. You can do that. I feel like I have a little bit more control if I put it in a pan. It is a lot of work though because you have to stay by it and keep it moving for a long time until you get it toasted. This can be over an hour of mixing and stirring and checking the temperature as we go along. So I've got this on right now. I'm going to start on a fairly high temperature to get everything heated up, but as I get closer and closer to the finished product, I'm going to lower that temperature so I have fine control over it. You don't want to over roast these. You'll end up with a, a, a burnt tasting, really, really dark, somewhat flavorless chocolate. If you don't toast it enough, you end up with kind of a, a sour, not very good chocolate either. And so um, I, I'm going to try to hit that perfect balance there of, of that rich, chocolatey, slightly toasty flavor, but not overly so. One of the important things to do while you're doing this is to keep this moving, keep it stirring so you don't burn the beans on the bottom. One thing I'm going to do as I continue on with roasting these is I'm going to occasionally take out a bean, peel it, and either just look at it or taste it. And this will give me a baseline to watch the progress of the beans as they're toasting here. When you start off, this will be hard to see with a camera, but the beans usually start off with anywhere from a um, purplish color to a almost a black color. Eventually, they can also have a light brown color to them. Eventually, they're going to turn more of a chocolatey brown color over time, and they'll also become more crisp to the touch. So I'm going to look for these differences, and I'm also going to taste a little bit as it goes along. When you start off, it's really bitter, and it's an uncomfortable bitter. As you go through the roasting process, that bitter turns more and more into a, a smooth chocolatey bitter over time. We're about 20 minutes into cooking now. You can see the beans have all come up to temperature and I don't know if you can see this or not but it's just slightly smoking and that's okay. You probably will want to turn off your fire alarm or have a nice fan going. I turn the fan off so that you can hear me when I'm talking. It's also common when you get to this stage that some of the beans will pop and you'll hear it. Sometimes it's pretty loud. It's like popcorn. They'll even fly out of the pan. So it's about 45 minutes later. I'm going to take this off of the heat while I test the beans. Now the beans are hot, but the bitter flavor isn't quite as far in the back of my throat. It's more a, a Ford chocolatey flavor in my mouth. I think this is probably done. 
This went a lot faster than I expected. A lot of times it takes me over an hour, an hour and a half to toast the beans. I think what might be, what might have happened here, I've had these beans sitting around for a long time and they may be a lot drier than the beans are normally when I get them fresh at the market. They still have a lot of moisture and that probably takes a long time to get, uh, to draw all that moisture out of the beans before they really start toasting. It's good to try a few of them. You don't want to just try one of them. I want to try a few because maybe one of them is got a little bit over toasted. Maybe another one will be a little bit under toasted. One of the other things I find is um, if you if you were doing this professionally, you would have a machine that would bring all of these beans very slowly up to an exact predetermined temperature and then hold them at that temp at that temperature so that they're completely perfectly roasted all the way same all the way through that gives you a very consistent flavor of chocolate this is going to have some burnt spots some untoasted less toasted parts to it bigger beans little beans the bigger ones are going to cook slower than the little ones and so on what that means though is that hopefully we're going to have a whole range of flavors and a whole range of different slightly different amounts of toastedness to these beans and to me that makes a, a very interesting a, um, a very flavorful rougher but also more complex flavored chocolate. So I really enjoy that diversity that you get from making these beans at home. Okay, now we're gonna shell the beans. Just for comparison's sake, this is a batch of fresh beans that haven't been roasted. Compare that in color to the roasted beans, which are, which are a lot more gray looking. I can, and these are fresher beans than the ones that I started with here, so I can feel these are still wet. And notice that that shell, I can kind of peel it off, but it's a real pain to get that thing off and it's stuck. It's glued onto the seed inside. Once this is roasted, however, watch this. You give it a little bit of a twist and that shell comes right off. I'm going to dump that shell on the ground. I got my bean in there, nice and shiny, smooth brown. And I can just sit here, peel the beans like this. Sometimes these beans will break when you open them. This is good to check. Make sure that there are no bugs inside of them. If you see webby things or stuff that looks like um, sawdust inside of it, throw them out. This one looks okay. It just broke a little bit, so that's not a problem. This other one, um, actually I can, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of dusty stuff inside. Might have been a bug or something that was eating it. That's another good reason to shell these beans. Here's a bad bean. I can see there's little bug holes in it. Uh, if I were to have winnowed this by crushing it, I probably wouldn't have caught this one. And this one, again, I can see, you know, probably would make good chocolate, but it would just be chocolate with little bugs in it. So, um, yeah, probably the chocolate you eat at home is full of bugs, too. So, it's your choice if you want to throw those bugs out or not, but I'm going to throw them out. And I'll just keep shelling these. And you can get really good at this over time. Look at that, pops right off. So the proportion of cocoa to sugar is really up to your preference. I like a pretty good dark chocolate. I'm going to aim right now for about a um, 60 to 70 percent chocolate to sugar ratio. And so that means the easiest way to do that is about two parts by weight of chocolate, one part by weight of sugar. So I'm going to do that on a scale here, but if you don't have a scale, you can watch the approximate amounts that I put in here. So I'm putting in about two cups of cacao. Those two cups of cacao turn out to be about 10 ounces. We got 10 ounces of cacao. Oops. And so I'm going to add five ounces of sugar. Now just so you can see what this ends up being, five ounces of sugar is just a little bit over a half cup of sugar. All right, we're getting ready to grind now. This is the most fun part of the whole process. We've weighed it out. We have the cacao and the sugar together. I'm gonna to put it in the grinder. Now I've set the grinder for the first grind. I've set it on a fairly loose setting. And I can, I can take my uh, wrench here and I can tighten it up. I'm going to do that later though because I want it to be easy going the first time around. So I'm going to start putting this in the hopper. 
And I'm just holding my hand here to keep this from wobbling because I don't have a very steady table right now. So you can see this first grinding, it kind of looks like coffee grounds, but it's, it's moist. And I, if I squeeze it together, I could actually make chocolate just like that. And this is how some people make chocolate. Can I uh, just try a little, little Absolutely. piece? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, totally. So you can totally eat it just like this. But we're going to grind it multiple times. It's going to get ground finer, and this is eventually going to turn into a liquid. Okay, so we've got the first grind here. It's pretty rough stuff. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put it straight back into the hopper. Notice I put some taper in here so that it doesn't leak out of there anymore. You don't want to make too many pauses in here because if you do, this will cool off and it'll start to harden. And you don't want it to harden inside of your grinder. Okay, I put this little foil shield on here to have everything fall that way. So let's go now. There we go. Now it's not falling on the ground. So I want you to see what that looks like. Can you see that? Okay, so you can see what it, how many have we done it? Four times? I think this I believe, is, yeah. this will be time, this will be grind number five. So look at this, it is turning into a liquid. It's warming up, I have to scrape this off, it's a complete mess, my hands are covered with chocolate. Make sure your hands are nice and clean when you do this. And now look at this, look at this stuff. Yeah. Again, it's, it's gonna keep turning even more liquid, I won't even be able to do this pretty soon. See that liquid chocolate squeezing out of there? I've also, I haven't shown you this, but I've increased the tension a lot on the grinding plates. So you can really hear that, it's metal against metal now, because I want the finest grind possible. Now I could keep doing this hundreds of times, and that's basically when you get chocolate that's made in a factory, is it's ground hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times until it's really smooth. But we're not going to do that because we're lazy. This was my dream as a kid, was to just have chocolate pouring out of the machine Definitely and then to, to eat it with my fingers. I'm finally living my dream. I really am. Yep. We've got liquid chocolate in here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take half of this and I'm going to mix that stuff with hazelnuts because we're going to make some hazelnut chocolate. I don't want the hazelnut ground in it though, I just want them whole hazelnuts. We've toasted these a little bit. That's probably good, right? And I have no idea how to mix this. Um, I may I may leave this, I may leave this for a moment. You'll have to use your imagination on how I do this because what I want to show you is what I have experience with doing. This stuff here, we're going to put this on a piece of foil. Now I'm not going to temper the chocolate. Tempering the chocolate is another step that chocolatiers will take and people if you're using this for um, if you want chocolate that lasts a long time, that's shelf stable, that doesn't melt easily, you want to temp your chocolate. But um, I don't care because I'm going to eat this stuff quickly because it's so delicious. So I don't care if I have shelf stable chocolate. What I, I'm just going to cool this off quickly in the refrigerator. So I'm going to spread this out. It's already starting to cool off and thicken up. It was liquid pouring out of that machine a few minutes ago. Spread this out. You can put the lines in there to help break it. Throw this in the fridge. All right. We have to continue quickly before the chocolate starts to harden up in this, so I'm going to start adding flavors to it. I've got two cups of coconut, which is about four ounces of cocoa, same amount of chocolate measured out, four ounces or two cups of cocoa, two cups of chocolate, and then I've added a little bit more um, sugar, it's about three quarters of a cup of sugar, just because I like a little bit more sugar with the cocoa, or with the coconut, and mixing little bits at a time to keep it, uh, to keep the right proportion. So a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Hopefully I haven't waited too long and it's not freezing up inside of the machine. A little bit of coconut. 
and start grinding. By the way, this is very dry coconut. I made this myself, got fresh coconuts, ground it, dried it out. Um, do not put anything wet in with your cocoa. If you put anything wet in with your chocolate and you grind it, it will seize up. All right, check this out. We've done this how many times? Two times? and Three times. And I've already got liquid chocolate coconut. Look at how much more I have now. That's because the extra coconut and the extra sugar really bulk this stuff up. That chocolate just disappears over time. The other thing, the first time you run it through, a lot of that chocolate is still stuck inside of the machine. So now that I already had chocolate in the machine, I'm squeezing this stuff through and um, I'm not losing as much. So I'm gonna put this back, I'm gonna do my last run. I just want you to see what this looks like. It's really messy. You can see again, I'm covered with chocolate. Chocolate coconut coming out of there. Look inside that hopper one more time. Look at that liquid chocolate in there. All right, here's the coconut chocolate. Look at how much there is of this stuff. So I'm gonna scrape this all into here. That is a lot of chocolate. I can spread this out in a massive chocolate bar now. Oh yeah. All right, so here's our finished product. In total, this is about two pounds of chocolate. Now I started with two pounds of beans, but we have to take, we have about a half pound of beans that I didn't use and of all these shells and the stuff that I discarded. Plus when you roast the beans, it loses some weight too, just up and it goes up in smoke basically. This is the chocolate coconut. This stuff, look how crisp this is. I can't even break it. There we go. Peel this off. Giant chunk. This is about a pound of coconut chocolate right here. Break this off. Pretty snappy. Now this stuff will turn soft, especially that coconut chocolate will turn soft if you keep it out of the refrigerator. So I will keep this refrigerated. Pure dark chocolate. Very snappy, very smooth, breaks almost like tempered chocolate. It's not tempered. This stuff will not melt if you leave it out of the refrigerator, but I still like to keep it refrigerated just to keep it fresh. And because it does turn slightly soft, it's not crisp um, because it's not tempered chocolate. Here's the hazelnut chocolate. It was kind of messy stirring in those hazelnuts, but it looks tasty, so I'm happy. This here is habanero chocolate. I didn't show the making of this, but um, I just put dried habaneros. Don't put wet peppers in it. Remember, that'll seize up the whole operation. I put dry habaneros in there, and delicious, super spicy habanero chocolate, just how I like it. And then, last but not least, what is this? This is the chocolate that was left in the chocolate maker when I cleaned it out. There was actually a lot more, but I just threw that all in the sink. It's soaking and dissolving off of there, but I get a whole meal's worth of chocolate just out of this. So um, it's not quite as good. It's kind of crunchy. It's a mixture of all the different types of chocolates. There you go. Two pounds of chocolates. Took me about maybe four hours total of work. And um, I hope I can find a lot of friends to share this with. I hope you get to make some chocolate like this at home and tell me your stories if you have any successes. Thanks a lot. Bye.